Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon. Thanks so much for coming on. Good afternoon. Well, let's start with the minutes from the Federal Reserve's meeting last month. They show support for an interest rate hike, as we just heard, of 50 or 75 basis points again. Uh, that seems to be the expectation in the market, uh, maybe more on the higher side of that. And data show the U.S. job market is still tight. A bigger rate hikes, some think, though, will lead to recession. What do you make of the FOMC meet, uh, meeting minutes? Yes, before the session yesterday, uh, we had a data released uh, from the minutes, uh, and it has talked about the uh, participants concur that the near-term inflation outlook had deteriorated since the time of the May meeting. Uh, the minutes have stated that uh, related to this, and also which means that uh, justifying maybe 0.75 percentage point increase, uh, uh, which was happening uh, the prior meeting, and also maybe the possibility that next meeting will be the same case. Uh, this is the uh, first time of that such uh, magnitude of rate hike since 1994, uh, obviously having a very restrictive monetary policies by the Fed. Uh, the participation have judged that uh, additional of 50 to 75 basis points would be more appropriate uh, for the next meeting, which is the uh, July 27th, uh, because the inflation numbers still remains to be quite uh, uncertain, and uh, obviously they become much more hawkish because of this. Um, if you look at the uh, pretty much the, the level of the energy prices that caused the huge inflation hike. Uh, we did see that number coming down quite rapidly recently, uh, including the, the oil prices, WTI falling below $100 per barrel. Uh, also, a lot of the commodity prices, the raw material costs, uh, have declined since the beginning of July. So uh, this is clearly some indications that maybe the possibility of rate hike might be easing after the July meeting. Uh, if you look at the Fed uh, uh, stance and also if you look at the what happened to the 10-year government bond rate, uh, it slightly rose back to 2.95% uh, from it fell previously to around 2.8% uh, because of the uncertainty about the economic recession. Uh, overall, I think there's uncertainty continue to remain at level of the rate hike as well as the possibility of recession for U.S. economy. Well, stocks on Wall Street were actually higher Wednesday uh, after that news. Moderate increases across the three main indices, about a quarter to a third of a percent. The jobs report taken as a sign for a little optimism. What's the story in the global equity markets? Yes, if you look at the uh, Wednesday move, uh, S&P 500 and NASDAQ Composite posted uh, their third straight day of gain, uh, rising by 0.36% and 0.35% respectively. Uh, also, Dow climbed by about 0.23% for the second consecutive session uh, out of the three. Uh, stocks climbed after the release of the Fed's June meeting minutes, uh, where the official reiterated that a tougher stance against inflation, saying that maybe on another 50 to 75 basis point will be likely appropriate. Uh, the clear thing is, is that before this minute, uh, we saw about 95% chance of rate hike by 0.75%. But maybe with inflation pressure coming down somewhat, uh, the possibility of lowering the level of a uh, rise uh, could happen. But in any case, uh, after this time of June, July, uh, in uh, September, the, clearly the signal will be that the rate hike level will be declining as the Fed rate will re, uh, reach 2.5 percent, uh, the neutral rate. Uh, after 75 basis point rise in July, it will hit 2.25. So in September, if they raise it by about 0.25, then it will reach the neutral rate. So therefore, uh, inflation and pressure will become uh, less because of a much higher rate environment. Um, having said that, we did see uh, Asian market recovering as well because of this kind of news. Um, the most of the Asian market traded uh, higher, uh, and also U.S. stock futures market is also showing somewhat of a recovery uh, because that uh, liquidity condition might be able to improve uh, after the uh, July meeting by Fed. 
Well, Korean stocks led those gains in Asia with a solid rise for Samsung affiliates, um, bioscience and chip makers doing well, and foreign investors buying today. The cost be back above 2300 Tell us about the domestic market. Yes, if you look at the uh, Korean market, uh, Kospi rose by 1.84%, and Kostek was up by 1.79%. Uh, if you look at yesterday, we saw massive selling uh, of the Korean stock uh, because of the uncertainty about the currency. Uh, we continue to show... Uh, the U.S. dollar strengthening to 106 plus, as close to as 107, uh, and one depreciating. So their foreigners were major sellers yesterday. Uh, but uh, we saw uh, quite a bit of an increase in interest towards the Kostak market. Uh, that happened also for the U.S. as Nasdaq showed a quite strong move in Tuesday's market. So, uh, so clearly we are seeing somewhat of a move uh, from the value stock to the growth stock because of a lower interest rate environment that is expected uh, with the inflation falling. So uh, when you have a growth rate slowing down and interest rate falling, uh, we obviously like uh, this growth stock. So that's why Costec had an interest of uh, in, uh, buying by foreign investors. Uh, if we look at the uh, overall foreign investors' uh, net purchases today, uh, we saw actually coming back to the uh, Cosby market, uh, net buying of $144 billion. Uh, and also they net bought a futures market by about $510 billion. So clearly, um, next week, there will be options and futures uh, closing day, and therefore, uh, uh, we will see uh, foreigners are probably coming back to this market because of massive net buying they're doing in the futures market. Uh, overall, we did see the Korea's current account surpluses uh, continue to be, uh, we saw in May number that remained to be $3.86 billion of surpluses, uh, despite there's uncertainty about the economic slowdown in the global case. Uh, overall, uh, we think that Korea is at a very cheap valuation territories. Uh, therefore, uh, if the currency stabilizes, then the value play will come through, and also foreign investors might be coming back, and that will cause the market to recover. The fair value of Kospi, we think, is at least well above uh, 2,400 level, uh, as high as 2,700 level. So we think that over the next uh, few months, uh, market might be in position to recover somewhat. So some signs for optimism out there. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that uh, with your help, Mr. Youth. Thank you so much for coming on the program today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much.